Hey, this is Eddie Hale, and this week in my Adobe Illustrator class, we're going to practice the Pathfinder tools. To work on the Pathfinder tools, you will design a set of icons that might be used in a website. This is a set of icons designed by the amazing Paul Casper, and they're made out of a lot of basic shapes that have been cut out of other basic shapes using the Pathfinders. In Illustrator, we're going to practice by making this little kitty icon here, and if you look at him, He's been made with basic shapes cut out of other basic shapes. The pathfinders are found under Window Pathfinder. I drag this little panel out so we can use it out here. These icons are destined for web, so I'm going to make a new document. And the profile is going to be web. I'm not concerned about the size right now. Just click OK. There's this thing. When you're making an icon, it's really nice to know where the center of the icon is. So I'm going to turn on my rulers, and I'm going to drag a ruler guide out of this ruler, and that will be the center of my icon, and it'll come in very handy later on. I'm going to take an ellipse, and I'm going to draw the face shape of the kitty. I hold Option and Shift, and I make a perfect circle from the center out. Now I'm going to change the color of that circle to sort of a yellow-ish kitty color, and I'm going to take the stroke off it. I don't want to stroke. And there's the face shape of my kitty. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Now I'm going to draw his nose. It starts out as a perfect ellipse, perfect circle ellipse. I fill it with pink, a little lighter pink. And now I'm going to do my first pathfinder thing. I'm going to take the rectangle tool, and I'm going to cover up the bottom half of this circle. And with my pathfinders, I'm going to create a half circle. I'm going to switch to the arrow tool by clicking over here. I'm going to marquee both of those in so I have both of those shapes selected. And in the pathfinder panel, I'm going to click minus front. And it clips the rectangle out of the circle. I'm going to move this onto the kitty shape and with the uh, Smart Guides, center it right on there. Next, I'm going to draw his mouth shape. His mouth shape starts as a perfect circle. Now, with my Move tool, I'm going to hold the Option key and Option drag a copy of this circle. And I'm looking at the negative space here. This little resulting crescent down here is going to be the shape left over. I'm going to select both of those pieces. And in my Pathfinder panel, I'm going to do minus front again. And that makes half of his mouth. I don't want this anchor point up there, though. It's going to get in the way later, so I take that out with the pen tool. Now picture that. That's half of his mouth there. I'm going to flip this shape over and make a duplicate of it using this really neat trick. I take the Reflect tool, which is hidden under the Rotate tool. I click once, generally in the center of this shape, one click, and then down below, I hold Shift and Option, and I click again, and I get a duplicate. The Option makes a duplicate, and the Shift key makes it flip over a perfectly vertical line. So there's his mouth. Now I'm going to make those into one shape. I'll take my arrow tool. I'll select both pieces, and I'll do Pathfinder Unite. And you'll see now, if you look at them, that they are one shape instead of two. I'll pull that over the kitty's face and using smart guides I'll line it up on the center of his face and position it under the nose where I want it. I have to take this nose shape and do a keystroke command shift right bracket to bring that to the front. Now what I'm drawing is I'm drawing his little whisker holes. I drew a perfect circle there holding the shift key with the ellipse tool. And now using the black arrow I'm option dragging that first shape around to make little whisker holes. I'm going to option drag them to the other side. And I'm not concerned about them being perfectly positioned. This part of the cat can be sort of organic and random. Everything else will be almost perfectly symmetrical. Next I'm going to draw an eye shape for this kitty. It starts as a perfect circle. So I'm holding the shift key while I draw with the ellipse tool. It's filled with a blue color. And now I'm going to switch to the arrow tool. I'm going to option drag this circle down. And wherever these two overlap, that's going to be his eye shape. So I can kind of picture that almond-shaped eye there. 
I select both of those and now in the Pathfinder panel I click this button for Intersect and only the places where the two shapes overlap will be left. So there is his eye shape. But then I decide I want to do something else. I want to have sort of a shadow on the top of his eye, like his eyelid is casting a shadow. So I draw an ellipse and I carefully position it so that it's going to leave a little crescent shape on the top there when I am done. Now, thinking ahead, I take the arrow tool and I click on that and I make a copy, Command C. I select both pieces and I do minus front and that's going to be the shadow shape on top of my eye. I'm going to make it a little darker blue. And after I make that darker blue, I want to bring his whole eye shape back. I go to Edit, Paste in Back. I copied it a couple seconds ago, and now I can paste it in back of that shape. And it'll be perfectly positioned over it. And I'll bring it back. So there's my little shadow shape on top of the eye. I can drag that eye onto the kitty's face. And I line up, use Smart Guides, to line its edge up with the edge of the nose shape because that's where I want it. Now I'm going to option drag it to the other side and again use smart guides to line it up with the edge of the nose on that side of his face so that it's all symmetric. Now I need to make his iris. His iris starts out as an ellipse. Not a perfect circle, it's a taller ellipse. And I fill it with black. And I do this trick that I've been doing where I switch to the arrow tool, I option drag a copy of this over here, and I'm looking at the space between them where they overlap. That's going to be the shape of his iris. So I select both of those. I go to intersect in the Pathfinder panel, and there's his vertical slit iris. I center it on his eye using Smart Guides. It snaps to the center. Now I have to scale it up. I hold the Option key while I scale here so that it scales from the center. And then on the bottom I just drag straight down on this middle handle. And so the iris is the size of the eye and it's still centered on the eye. I zoom out a little bit, take my arrow, and I Option drag it over to the other eye and it snaps to the center using Smart Guides. And now my kitty has two eyes. I better save that. I've been working on it a while. I click on his face so that that is the color in the color picker and I draw a perfect ellipse to make his ear. It is going to be his ear. And then I'm going to do this trick with the white arrow. Click once on the top anchor point and then drag it straight up using smart guides to go straight up and that's going to be his ear shape. I'm going to move it onto his head and I'm going to use the black arrow to rotate it until I find a spot that I think makes a nice kitty ear, I'll scale it up just a little bit. And then I'm going to use that reflect trick that I used a while ago. I'm going to click once on the center of that shape, shift option click down below, and that selected ear will flip over to the other side of the cat. It'll be perfectly symmetrical. Now I'm going to do the inner part of his ear. I'm going to copy that ear paste in front, so there's two ears there now. I'm going to eyedropper the nose. I touch the letter I there to switch to the eyedropper tool. I eyedroppered his nose. And with the black arrow now, I'm holding the option key so that this new ear shape scales from the center. So there you can see my second shape filled with pink in the center of the ear there. I'm going to lighten up the pink a little bit. and I'm going to send those to back so they go behind the kitty face. Now the next thing I do is I'm going to add a little shadow to that ear shape, sort of like I added a shadow to the top of the eye shape. So if you watch, I'm going to option drag down here a copy of that ear shape. And then the last moment I decide that I want to option drag them both out here so that I preserve that original ear shape. I make the pink darker and I click on minus front and now I have this 
unusual shape that is going to be the shadow inside the ear. Smart Guides helps me to line it up with the edge of that pink shape, and now my ear has a little shadow on it. I select both of those shapes, and using my Reflect tool, I do this trick again. I click once, I shift Option, click above, and it flips a copy. The copy is behind the other ear shape, so I have to click on this ear. I use a keystroke, shift command left bracket to send that ear to the back. And now there's my kitty. I think he needs some stripes, so I start my stripes with a perfect circle shape, holding the shift key when I draw an ellipse. I'm going to fill it with a brown color, and then similar to when I made the mouth or the shadow on the top of the eye, I'm going to option drag this ellipse up here, and I'm looking at the space left over sort of a crescent shape on the bottom there. That's going to be the shape of the stripe. So I select both of those shapes and I go to the Pathfinder panel minus front. And where that where that shape overlaps his face, that's going to be a little stripe, like a tiger stripe. Now I hold the Option key and I drag a copy of that and I rotate it and reposition it for another stripe I'm going to do that again. I'm going to option drag that shape, rotate it a little bit, and reposition it. A little bit random. Now I'm, I want to preserve that face shape, so I'm going to select that face circle and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste it behind one of these stripes. I'll click on this stripe and I'll go to edit paste behind, paste in back, I'm sorry and I select the face shape. I shift click on each of the stripes so they are selected too. And then I do this pathfinder that I really like. I use it a lot, it's the divide. And this is gonna slice all those overlapping shapes up into individual shapes. So the face shape now, if you look at it, it goes down here and around each of these stripes. So I can delete that face shape and I'm left with the stripes. Each one of these shapes is its own separate shape. I'm going to marquee those in with the white arrow, and I'm going to delete twice, and I'm left with just the stripes there. If I move this face shape, you'll see that it's still a complete circle because I made a copy of it a minute ago. And each of these stripes are their own shape. I'm going to select them, and I'm going to use the Reflect tool again, which is the letter O. If you tap the letter O, you get the Reflect tool. Click once, shift option, click down below, and I flip those stripes over the center point. Now I'm going to make stripes on his forehead too. You see me make some stripes. So in a couple of seconds, I'm going to speed up the tape. I select these two shapes, minus front, reposition it a little bit, and I'm going to make the other stripes. The tape is moving fast now. I reposition them and I flip them over the center point. You see that, then I'm going to copy the face circle. I'm going to paste it behind one of those stripes. I'm going to do Pathfinder Divide, delete the parts I don't want, and I'm left with just stripes. Now this kitty, if you look at him, he has been cut in half, and half of his face is darker, so it gives him a little dimension. I'm going to take the line tool, and I'm going to draw a vertical line through his face. I'm going to make it black so that you can see it. You don't have to stroke it, but I'm going to. And I'm going to select his face shape and his nose and his mouth. And then I realize I got I have kind of a problem. I'm going to get a lot of shapes right here where all those shapes overlap. So I'm going to eliminate a few shapes right now. I'm going to select his nose and his mouth. And I'm going to use this button it's the Merge button, and wherever shapes overlap, it just deletes that part of the shape. So I click Merge, and where the mouth went under the nose, it's just gone now. I just have nose and mouth and no overlap. That will make it cleaner when I select all of these, the nose, the mouth, and the face. And don't forget to select the vertical line, and I click Divide. It's going to divide all those fairly cleanly. They all jump to the front. Whenever you run a Pathfinder, it jumps to the level of the top shape. So I have to send those to the back, Shift-Command-Left-Bracket. 
And now all those shapes go on back. Oh, I have to send his ears to the back too. And now I'm going to click on this half of the shape and I'm going to do this kind of neat trick. I'm going to double click on this color swatch up here and it opens up the color picker. I want the same color but a little darker. So I'll click over here in the color ramp and I will make just a little darker yellow. To make that easier to see, I'm going to go up to view and hide my guides. So you can't see that blue guide. So there, half of his face is darker. And now I'm going to go through and darken in all the other shapes too. I click on the color swatch, double click on the color swatch. I move the circle down just a little bit and I get a darker version of each of these. Now I'm speeding up the tape because I don't want to make you watch me play in the color picker. And I darken every shape, the eye, the shadow under the eye, the ears, all the stripes get darker in the color picker. And there, now I've got him, his dimension made. I'm going to make him more icon-like by putting him inside of a perfect square. So with the rectangle tool, I'm holding shift and I'm making a perfect square. I send it to the back with a keystroke and I'm going to fill it with a teal color. And then I'm going to use my smart guides to position it perfectly in the center of the kitty. Now everything is all centered. And I'm going to do this thing that's kind of neat, kind of trendy. I'm going to draw a shadow. And this is a place for me to remind you that you don't need to use basic shapes with a Pathfinder. Anything you draw with the pen tool can be used with the Pathfinder to cut up another shape. So I'm drawing a pen tool shape here that's going to be a shadow behind the kitty. I am going to cut this shadow shape out of this square and back, but first I'm going to make a copy of the square and paste it behind this shadow shape because I want to preserve that square and back in case I want it later. I'll take the shadow shape and I'll fill it with a darker teal color. Double click on that swatch, click down below to make a slightly darker color. And now I'll select both of those shapes and I just want the part where they overlap, so I'll click the intersect button. Now I have to send the shadow to the back. I'll use my right click, send to back. Then I have to send the teal square to the back, and now my shadow is visible. And you could really stop there, but just to go the extra mile, I'm going to add a shadow behind this ear too. So I option drag my shadow over here. I'm going to use my white arrow click on this anchor point and then drag it out at the same angle so that it, that ear casts a shadow too. I have to hide the rest of the shadow over here. I will drag this anchor point behind the kitty and then I'm going to switch to my pen tool and just make these other anchor points go away. The pen tool will delete an anchor point when you click on it. So there I deleted those anchor points and now my kitty has a shadow behind two ears and his whole face is casting a shadow. Now I'm going to turn that into a gradient. I do that by, I add these colors to the swatches panel. I add the dark teal and the light teal to the swatches panel. I click on that shadow shape there and I click on the gradient in the gradient panel. I change the lightest color to the light teal, the darkest color to the dark teal. Then I take the gradient tool and I change the angle so it's lightest down on the bottom and darkest where it hits the kitty. And there is my finished kitty icon. Isn't it beautiful? Ready to add meaning to a website. So there you go. Please uh, practice your Pathfinders and come to class next time ready to practice the Pathfinder tool. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Bye.